Bruce Campbell from Home Smart Eye Care Realty. And this is a little something I like to call Ask the Experts because as a realtor, I get asked things all the time and there are some, some things that are out of my scope of expertise, but I certainly need answers for. And, and one of those things, I get asked a lot of tax questions. So my friend Nima, Nima Rizali is on with me and Nima is a CPA and MSA. That's uh, a, a couple of pretty big titles there, Nima. Thank you very much for having me, Bruce. I'm glad I can help you, sir. Yeah. Now, CPA, most of us know that. That's Certified Public Accountant, right? That's and right. the MSA is, is what? Master's of Science in Accountancy. So it's okay. kind of like a, uh, it's a master's degree in accounting in particular. Man, so when it comes to crunching numbers, you are a master. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you some tax questions, and I'm not going to go full into everything that you know. We're going to we're going to make these pertain to real estate, buying and selling of homes. Uh, the first big thing is uh, what kind of tax benefits do people have when they buy a home as opposed to renting? Good question. So every taxpayer, every individual tax, well, not every, but generally speaking, an individual tax credit gets one of two things. They either get a standardized deduction or they get itemized deduction. Now, what that standardized deduction is depends on the year and your filing status, as in if you're married, if you're single, if you're HOH, they vary. But generally, you get one or the other, and generally, you get the greater of the two. So most renters will take the standard deduction. Uh, 2020, for a married couple, for example, the deduction will be $24,800. Okay. So you'll take your AGI, which is your adjusted gross income, and subtract the first 24800 deemed as non-taxable. Anything after that is considered taxable, and they'll use that to calculate your tax. Now, homeowners have an alternative route, which is the itemized deduction. What they can do, depending on how much mortgage interest they pay, how much real estate tax they pay, they can end up, end up itemizing on their personal tax return. Now, itemizing can actually result in a deduction greater than 24000 800. So what does that mean? And long story short is this, the rent that you pay is not deductible, right? Right. But the mortgage interest that you pay may be deductible depending on how much you pay, what your filing status is, and um, uh, other factors as well. I mean, different states have different rules, obviously, but. All right. But we're dealing with California here. That's so, correct. But, but automatically, we can't just assume that buying a home gives us a tax advantage? Well, I don't know if that's true either. I mean, you may not itemize, but there are other benefits to it. For example, um, generally speaking, the sale of your primary resident is tax-free. Assuming you've lived there for two years or whatever, there are a couple prongs that you have to meet, a couple tests. But if you meet those tests, then up to $500,000 gain is tax-free. What does that mean? Say if I buy a home today for $200,000, and I sell it, if I'm married, and I sell it five years from now for uh, $600,000, am I taxed on that? No. There's a clause called the Section 121 exclusion. And if you're married, five, and you meet the test, there's a couple of them. One of them is you have to live there for two years. It has to be your primary resident, et cetera. But the first $500,000 gain is tax-free. What that really means is most of the time, the sale of your primary resident will be tax free. And of okay. course, if I, if I buy a home and I die and I pass my home to my kids, they'll get what we call stepped up basis. And in other words, they won't be taxed on it either. So okay. basically the sale of a primary resident, generally speaking, will not be taxed. Unless so, we're in, in the high, high range home. Unless you make like $800,000, $900,000 on it, or anything $500,000, but unless you bought the house like in the eighties and sold it now, you, you probably won't. For that. And not to mention the fact that any improvements you do to the property are uh, essentially added to the basis, uh, closing costs, uh, realtor fees, these are all deductible before the $500,000. Okay. So uh, it's, it's very rare for the sale of primary resident to be considered taxable. And see, you just, blew wide open a big misconception a lot of people have. I was actually just talking to my brother yesterday 
who owns rental property and he was thinking of selling it and he goes, yeah, but then I got to do that capital gains tax. I said, wait, wait, wait a minute, bro. You know, there, there's a certain amount and he's well below that $500,000. But, on this but Bruce, yes. we're talking about a primary resident. You're talking oh. about a rental. A rental oh. doesn't get that exclusion unless you used to live there and then you moved out and you rented it for a couple of years. Then you have you know, uh, depreciation recapture, which is 25% capital gains, which is still less than most of the time your ordinary tax rate. But this is a primary resident. Real, real estate uh, for rent, rental property, are not excluded under Section 121. So those will be taxed at, at, uh, at the capital gains rate, which may be zero because we're talking capital gains, right? It, right. Might, it might end up being zero depending on what other income you have. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, it's not, Good. No. Rental property is different. Don't be surprised if my brother calls you within the next couple of days, Nima. <laughs> uh, when someone goes to sell a house, and I, you, you rattle off a couple of these things, realtor fees, closing costs, um, uh, what else might be deductible when somebody goes to sell a house? Pretty much everything on, uh, the, on the broker statement that you'll see, on, on the closing agreement that you, you'll generally get from the title company. Uh -huh. Pretty much every, you know, the, the recording fee, title transfer, um, you know, all those fees that you see on there will be deductible. They'll either be deductible or um, if, you, if you're selling the property and if you're buying the property, they'll be added to your basis, which means they'll be considered before the $500,000 uh, exclusion. Okay. So if I, buy, if I buy a property for $200,000 and I spend $10,000 in... Uh, and title searches for realtor, for um, you know, for recording fees, et cetera, et cetera. My purchase price is really two hundred and ten. It's not that two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, okay. Uh, another quick question for you: What if I'm getting ready to sell my house and I put, we'll say, fifteen thousand dollars of new kitchen appliances in? Now, I did that to make my home more attractive to buyers uh, and try to add a little value to my home, but would any of that be tax deductible? Well, let me ask you this. Are we talking about a primary resident or are we talking about yes, a rent? a primary residence. Right, so that would add to your basis. So let's go back to the example. I bought the house for $200,000. Uh -huh. Now I'm selling the house for $400,000. Uh -huh. But before I sold the house, I have to put $15,000 in labor or in you know improvements. Right. So what does that mean? I went from 200 to 400, $200,000 gain, then you subtract that 15,000. So really my gain is 185,000. Okay. Now, as long as I met the test, there is no tax on that, on that gain over there, that 185,000. All right, good to know, good to know. I'll tell you, uh, Nima, you are just a wealth of information. And uh, uh, one of the reasons that, that I wanted to call you and get you on this Zoom chat and let other people know about your your wealth of information that you have is because every time I see you and every time I talk to you, you're you're gaining knowledge. You're you were studying for your masters when I first met you. You now have that. I mean, you're you're always working your way up. You're continually educating yourself, and I suppose you have to in some ways because tax laws are constantly changing. Correct? Yeah, they've they've been changing a lot lately, and I appreciate that, Bruce. You know. Uh... I like to surround myself with positive people. I, I, when you told me about this uh, this session, I, first opportunity I got to help you out and help out other possible homeowners. You know, I want to be involved in that. So thank you for for the compliment. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, thank you, thank you, Nima Razai, CPA and MSA. Do you want to throw out a number, a website, an email if anybody has any questions? Um, yeah, you can you can go ahead and email me at n r e z a e i dot two zero one eight at gmail dot com. Um, feel free if you got general questions, I'll be able to help you out. If not, you can always contact Bruce. He has my contact information. I'll, I'll put you in touch. I'll put you. I'll have my brother be calling you any day. <laughs> I can't help him with the rental property. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I. Neither can I. All right. Nima, thanks so much. Have a good day, sir. Thank you.